Well, we got some pork chops and we got some potatoes coming at you right now on the Chuck Wagon Cowboy Show. <laughs> to another episode of the Chuck Wagon Cowboy Show, hosted by yours truly, Chef Ron Locke. We have two great recipes we're going to be doing for you on this episode of the Chuck Wagon Cowboy Show. Now the first one we're going to go ahead and do is our marinated molasses pork chops, followed by a fantastic side dish called bacon stuffed potatoes. You're going to love these. These two recipes go great for a Sunday sit down dinner with your family, friends, and loved ones. Now we're going to go ahead and integrate these two recipes a little bit by time and preparation because there's some downtime between each of them that need prep work and such. So I'm going to bounce back and forth between these two. hope I won't confuse you too much. We'll try to take you all step by step on this and at the end give you a fantastic option to create a fantastic sit down supper alright so the first thing you want to go ahead and do is go ahead and get yourself four big russet potatoes alright now go ahead and clean those off scrub those off in the sink and then you want to get yourself a baking tray at this point too you want to go ahead and preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and then go ahead and place your potatoes on your baking tray and then go ahead and put those in the oven for one hour at 400 degrees alright now while that's going on, and that's what's going on in this kitchen right now, because I can already smell these potatoes starting, we're going to go ahead and start preparing the marinade for our marinated molasses pork chops. And let's go ahead now and show you the ingredients that are going into those, alright? Alright. In our ingredient roundup we have here first, we've got pork chops. Now, you can either use four average or big size pork chops, and I'm saying boneless pork chops by the way, or five smaller ones. Now I've got five smaller ones here. The object here is we're going to pan fry these in a 10 inch skillet. So you want to make sure that you've got, you know, just enough to go ahead and fill that skillet in. So four big ones will fill the skillet up or five smaller ones you can kind of go ahead and fit in there. You ain't going to fit much more than that in there. So you, and you want to leave a little room too as well for the convection to go and heat those all up. Alright, so I've got five small ones here. If you want bigger ones, go get yourself four boneless size pork chops. Big, big, big pork chops. Alright. We got here to round out the marinade now. We've got two cups of molasses. We have here two teaspoons of crushed pepper, red pepper flakes. We've got two tablespoons of minced garlic, two tablespoons of brown sugar. I've got a half a teaspoon here of minced ginger. I've got one teaspoon of dried thyme. I've got a quarter cup of red apple cider. I have here a half a cup, or I'm sorry, that's a quarter cup of some really strong black coffee. Yeah, that's a little strange having black coffee in your recipe now, huh? Take you all there. And then lastly, we've got here a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Now, all these combined are going to go into a bag like this, a zipper bag, and then our pork chops will be introduced into that. Now, we're going to take a quick break when we come back. We're going to commence to start mixing all these together and create a fantastic marinade that's going to go ahead and get into those pork chops, all right? So you want to come back and check this out, all right? We'll see you in a bit. You are watching WYE The Network. Alright folks, we're back now. We're going to go ahead and show you the mixing stage of how we're going to do our marinade here. Now before I go any further, I want to talk about two things. First, I want to talk about kitchen cleanliness. Make sure your countertops and areas are nicely cleaned. Also make sure your hands are nicely cleaned before you start. We're going to go ahead and roll up our sleeves here because we won't get down and dirty in this stuff here. Now, let's see here. I don't want to go too far up on the sleeves. This always takes a second. We'll get down here and all right, just like that. Very good. Tuck that in. All right, we're good to go. Hands are clean. We're all rolled up and ready to go here. All right, so basically this is pretty pretty easy. We're just going to go ahead and take all the ingredients, uh, other than the pork chops, and mix them into this bowl. Get yourself a medium to large size bowl. 
like I have here. A, a tip here, as I, we did for the show here, put your molasses in first in the big bowl because that's the stuff that's the most slowest or stickiest to get in and out of. This way you're not combining different things. Just go ahead and start this as your, uh, your bottom area, your, your basement area here as you would say, all right? Go ahead and do that. Now we're just going to go ahead and start adding dry ingredients first. All right, my thyme. I've got my ginger here. My minced ginger. This is fresh minced ginger from a ginger root. Okay. And we've got some of our brown sugar here. Okay. A lot of really good things going in this marinade, all right? Oh, we got some red pepper, some red crushed red pepper flakes. Mmm. Smell the heat coming off those already. All right, now we'll start getting into our liquid areas here. We've got some minced garlic, two tablespoons of that. You know, when we're adding two tablespoons of minced garlic, this is going to be some really yeehaw yum type of stuff we're doing here. Next up, we've got here it's our apple cider vinegar there. We've got also our Worcestershire sauce. Our bowls here. <laughs> and lastly, the oddball of our recipe here, the coffee. Okay, our strongly brewed coffee. Now, we just want to go ahead and mix this up, get a spoon or a spatula, and just mix this up, okay? And the molasses isn't too bad. What I would suggest, sometimes what you can do too, if you find it's really hard or it's really sticky, go ahead and just put it in the microwave for a few seconds and stir it up and just get it a little warm. And uh, it's just like syrup, syrup or anything else, you know, once you warm it up a little bit, it gets a little more liquefied. So, and that's all we're doing here, okay? Um, try to just emulsify it all together as best as you can, okay? Like so. It's going to be going in a bag anyway, so it's all good if it's not completely mixed because we're going to shake this up here in just a bit. I'm going to leave it like that. I just wanted to get it kind of all congealed together a little bit. Let's go ahead and put our spoon away here. Now, we want to go ahead and get your large zipper bag here. And we want to go ahead and put our pork chops in first. Now, you can do two ways. You can either go ahead and use a tongs, or you can go ahead and use your hands. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands here again. You know, every episode, you know I say this on every episode, but it's true. I, I, I dare people to go back and see how many episodes that I haven't actually gotten my hands in the food at least once. If anything else, that should be Chef Ron Locke's trademark. He is hands-on with his cooking, literally. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take our pork chops first and put those in our Ziploc bag here, our zipper bag, like so. No rhyme or reason how to put these in like that and one last one here like that all right I'm gonna go ahead and take the plate away here set that down now I want to go ahead and put in our marinade into the bag and you've got to be careful you don't want to spill this all over the place there is a little bit of a you know just carefulness in this but uh, just go ahead and I, you know here I'm talking about this and probably gonna spill it all over the place I shouldn't say that because I'm be jinxing myself we've been so good on this show about trying to be non-spilling. There we go. Just like that. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not getting it too high. Alright, we're good. I think one of the cameras are getting what I'm doing here. Let me move this over like this. There, I think my other camera can now finally get that. Probably get it like that. Alright, just like that. Okay, that is good. I'm going to go ahead and remove this, take this out. Now, whew, that was close. I was getting close to the top there. It almost did fall out. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? All right. You can go ahead and wipe that off a little bit like so. All right. Just go ahead then and zip lock your bag. Make sure you get this zip lock nicely, nice and tight. Okay. That's why I had washed this off a little bit too because, uh, or wiped this off a little bit too because it's right into where all the zip lock areas are. You just get really tight just like this because what you're going to do next and you do want to leave a little air in because you want this to kind of have a little bit of a flow just go ahead and just shake it around a little bit what you're going to do you see how I'm just doing that like that just kind of like a washing like the old washing machines used to go and just turn around like that an agitator just like that 
I wouldn't go ahead and do a force like shake like that because of the weight you might actually drop it or you may actually the, the zipper might come undone on top and that would not be a good thing you might have a pork chop flying around maybe your dog might like that but I don't think anybody else would so alright now we've got that nicely coated now what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and take this bag we're going to throw this in the refrigerator for about an hour we got our potatoes mixing up right now too which is all good so you see what I'm saying you mix these you mix these two recipes and interchange the time and the preparation together. You work with them, not against them. So we've got probably a half an hour left on the potatoes. We'll probably leave this in for about another hour or so. All right, so you know when we come back, we're going to go ahead then, while that's still marinating, because I kind of want to leave it in there for a couple hours, we're going to go ahead and start with the potatoes when they come out of the oven, and we're going to prepare these fantastic, fantastic bacon stuffed potatoes for you. All right, so come on back, and we're going to start on those right now. We're back, and now we're gonna go ahead and start our bacon stuffed potatoes. You're gonna love this. We've got our four big russets out of the oven, and they are smelling great. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is show you the ingredients first, and then we're gonna come back, and we'll go ahead and start you through the whole process of creating the mixture for our bacon stuffed potatoes. We're gonna take you step by step through that. So let's show you the ingredients first. In the Roundup Part Two, we've got our four russet potatoes right here, nicely baked up. We've got here a cup of shredded cheddar cheese, sharp cheddar cheese. We've got here a cup of sour cream. We've got here a half a cup of chopped chives. We've got here two tablespoons of cream. We've got here a half a cup of bacon. Now that's basically five, I would go about five strips of bacon. Just cook that up and then just go ahead and drain and chop it up. If you want to go ahead and cheat a little bit, you can go ahead and buy the pre-made real bacon pieces that are out in the grocery store too. It's about a half a cup. So either way, however you want to do it, but that's what you need for this recipe, about a half a cup of the chopped up bacon bits, all right, or pieces. Lastly, we've got about a, about a teaspoon of salt and pepper mixed up there for seasoning, and that's gonna be it. We're gonna come back now, and we're gonna show you how to put this all together into a fantastic, fantastic bacon stuffed potato. See you in a bit. Okay, now the first thing we want to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and slice our russet potato down half, and then we're going to scoop out the potato. We want to save our skins because we're going to be putting that back in in just a little bit. Let me walk you through it step by step here to show you what I'm talking about, all right? So go ahead and get yourself a knife. Let's go ahead and cut this down the middle. Hopefully it's cooked through like this, okay? And just go ahead and open it up like so. Kind of like a hot dog bun. <laughs> and we're just going to go ahead and scoop out the potato. All right. And what we want to do is go ahead and just throw this. Get yourself, we're going to be using a mixing mixing bowl. If you get a big bowl, if you don't have a stand-up mixer with a bowl in it, this is, this is my bowl for my stand-up mixer. You'll see this in just a bit, what I'm talking about. But get yourself a large size bowl if you don't. If you only have a hand mixer, just go ahead and uh, just use a big bowl. And then um, if you don't have a hand mixer, you, still do it by hand too with a spoon or whatever but uh, a mixer just make it a little bit easier for you but anyway that's what we're going to do here we're just go ahead and scooping this potato out like so and putting it into our large bowl here okay try to get it out as much as you can but be careful you don't want to go ahead you don't want to go ahead and um, cut through the skin if at all possible okay you can leave a little you can leave a little potato in there it's okay 
but you know, to obviously try to get as much out as you can. Okay, so that's what we're doing here, like so. And I know my I know my hands are probably in front of the camera here, the close-up camera. I'm trying to show you, but I gotta steady this too because it's a little a little shaky here. I'm trying to do two things at once. You know how that is in the kitchen, you and you're trying to do two things at once. Oh my God! And then you got kids in there that are trying to get in there and work with you and you're trying to do something else oh good lord let me tell you that gets crazy that gets crazy alright so that's one side so we do the other side okay now the camera should get this one because my hands not as much in the way although the other potato is in the way so but there we go just like that now you just gotta get it started make sure you let these cool off too I failed to mention that, I believe, but when these come out of the oven, you want to make sure that these cool off for at least a good half hour before you start messing with them. Obviously, you, you know, you don't want to mess with a really hot potato, but you don't want to get it too cold because it'll all starch together. Okay, there we go. But you really just kind of want to gut these for the most part. But don't, again, just, you know, you can leave a little potato in there, it's fine. Okay, something... That's good. That's that'll be good. Just something like that. Okay. Um, you want to have it something like this here. Let's see if I can show the camera like that. You see that? Something like that. Just caved out like that. Because we're going to fill these all back in. You're going to go ahead and set these aside once we do each one. Now we're going to go ahead and finish these up here, and then let's go ahead and show you once we finish these up what other things are going to be going into our mixing bowl here. All right. Okay, I'm in front of my mixer here. Now, we're going to go ahead and add some of our additional ingredients to our potato mixture that we scooped out of our potatoes that you just happen to see. And let's go ahead and start adding in such great things as cheese. Let's see here. We've got our sour cream. Let's go ahead and add that in. Oh, yeah. This is going to be good. Our two tablespoons of cream. You can use milk, too, if you want. You want to make it a little bit less fattening. You can use any sort of percent of milk if you want. And then um, I believe that is going to be it for right now. So what we're going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and get our mixer cam set up and we're going to show you how this all mixes up in our mixer. Okay, we're going to go ahead and turn the mixer on now on low and get this process started here. And we want to help this along just a little bit, just like that. Okay. And what I'll do is then I'll go ahead and just shut it off a little bit. For this, because it's got such a lumpy consistency, I'd rather not keep it going because I really want to get everything over into our mixing pallets, our mixing paddles over here. Okay, let's go ahead and just keep doing that here. There we go. You want to get this mixed in really good. You want it nice and fluffy. Okay. Get all the ingredients mixed up really well. So that's kind of what we're doing here. Just like that. You see how we're doing that? It's kind of like making a cake in a way. But we want everything nicely incorporated. Okay. And if, make sure you keep this on low, too, because if you put it any higher, you're going to have a mess on your hands when you're done. We want to get all the lumps out is what we really want to do. Now, you could do this by hand, too, if you, if you didn't have a mixer. I think most households now do. But if you don't, you know, our grandmas, a lot of our grandmas didn't. They did it by hand. But you want to be careful, too. You don't want to get it too mixed in. Because what will happen is it'll, the starches will end up making it very, almost gluey, okay? But we want a really nice consistency, and we're getting that just by looking at it here. Okay, and just look, just see if there's lumps or not. You, you know, that's the key here. I'm, I'm looking at some really smooth ones, really smooth potatoes here at this point. And just see how, you know, if you've got one, if you've got a stand-in mixer like I have here, that's how you do it, just like that. I'm sure most of you probably know how to do it anyway. But for those of you who've never seen this before, 
which is a great tutorial for you. Just like that. I think we're about done here, actually, folks. Yep, it looks like I think we're about done. All right. And that's it. Nice and fluffy, like so. If I can get some on the... <laughs> You gotta love this, you know, when you don't want when things don't want to work for you. See, there you go. No lumps. I mean, nice and incorporated like that. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead next, and we're gonna go ahead and do some stuffing of our potato skins. Okay. Now we've got our potato mixture just about done. We have a couple more ingredients that we need to do, but this is a process where you want to mix it with a spoon or a spatula instead of using your electric mixer for it because you want, it's a little more fragile and you don't want to get it too incorporated with the rest of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add in our half a cup or five strips of chopped up bacon. And I just want to go ahead, I'm just going to take this off like this and just do it for you like this. It's a lot easier than trying to steer and keep it stirred. But that's what we're going to do here. You can see we're just mixing this all together. The reason, again, we don't want to use the electric mixer for this is because we don't want to chop this bacon up. We want these bacon bits to be nice and full because we want to have those nice little tastes of bacon when we eat these bacon stuffed potatoes. All right, just like that. Okay, that's nicely incorporated. Man, these look good. <laughs> I'm impressed, even. These look good. These look good. All right, we'll set that back. Now, the only other thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to add in our salt and pepper, all right, our one teaspoon of each. Now, at this point, one teaspoon is probably enough. If you want a little more, go ahead and add a little more. Let's go ahead and see how this tastes here. Just like that. What I'm going to do, grab me a spoon because I'm going to have to actually taste this to see myself. All right. Let's go ahead and mix this up just like this. This is how our grandmas used to do it. This is how my mama used to do it. And my mama, she had mixers and stuff like that, but you know what? She learned from the old school, from her mama, my grandma. And so they did it just by hand. That's why you see a lot of these, these uh, Midwestern women have these really like broad shoulders and these really big forearms and stuff. You can tell why, because they were in the kitchen having to do all this manual work, you know, and back in the day. And so that's what we're doing here. I like to incorporate a little bit of the new with the old. All right, let's see how this tastes here. Take a little taste test. I'm going to do an early taste test here. A little bit different than I normally do at the end of the show. Mmm. That is yeehaw yum! <laughs> because I'm going to tell you what. You want to lay low on the salt. That bacon's got a lot of salt in it. So we're just adding a little bit more just to give it an even all flavor. So a teaspoon of, of each, maybe jack it up with pepper a little bit more depending on your taste, but other than that, that should be good to go, okay? Just like that. All right, I'm gonna slide this bowl over. I'm gonna switch here because I want the camera to see what I'm gonna do here. All right, I do believe that's about right right there. We're gonna go ahead and stuff this now with our, let me get a spoon here. Stuff this with our mixture, our potato mixture, okay? And all you're gonna do is, obviously very simple, just go ahead and fill it back in like so, just like this. Very easy to do. And you can, I would, I would hold it in like it was when you took it out. Now, these skins will have a tendency to spread open a little bit, but remember now, you're only getting as much back into these skins as you did when you took them out. So you gotta be a little, a little, conservative <clears throat> conservative when you're using and filling these in at first now what you can do is once you fill everything in you got mixture left just go ahead back and you can fill more in of course but go ahead and just get it to like this just enough to where it, about where it was when you took everything out all right and we'll see how that all goes just like that there we go that's a piece of bacon I don't want to waste any bacon all right so that's that we're gonna go ahead and finish stuffing the rest of these we're gonna come back and then we're going to go ahead and show you 
uh, basically what we're going to do with these, tell you how to do this. At this point, preheat your oven to 400 degrees, and then we'll finish this one up here in just a moment. And then, while that is baking, we can go ahead and start pan frying our fantastic marinated molasses pork chops. Come on back! Okay, in front of me here I have my stuffed bacon potatoes. These look fantastic. You know what they remind me of kind of like is a deviled egg. If you went to what you know how you take the egg out of the shell, the, the yolk, mix it with a few things and then put it back in. It's kind of the same thing with these potatoes. Let me tell you what, these potatoes are gonna smell fantastic when you bake them. Again, if you don't already have your oven preheated, preheated at 400 degrees. And we're gonna bake these for about 15 to 20 minutes. Start checking around 15 minutes. They should be a nice golden brown. You don't want to get it too done. All right, so usually about 15 minutes is about good. If your oven's a little weaker, probably about 20. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and throw these in the oven right now. When we come back, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to our stove here, our stove top, get our stove cam out, and we're gonna fry up those fantastic marinated molasses pork chops that are in the refrigerator right now. I'll bet they are fantastically marinated. We're going to show you how this all goes step by step. Come on back. Well, okay, we are in front of our stove top right now with our stove cam, and we're going to go ahead and start pan frying our fantastic marinated molasses pork chops. Now, the first thing you want to go ahead and do, obviously, is take them out of the refrigerator and remove your pork chops out of the bag and then just go ahead and sprinkle lightly with a little salt and pepper on each side and then go ahead and get yourself a nice large skillet, this is a nice large 10 inch skillet here put enough oil on the bottom to cover the bottom surface completely and now what we're going to go ahead and start doing turn this up to medium, hot, medium heat and then we're going to go ahead and start introducing our pork chops into our pan here. Want to make sure that you get the oil hot enough to go ahead and incorporate that. You see what I'm talking about? You really don't want to go more than four regular pork chops or five smaller pork chops, just like that. Okay? Now, what we want to go ahead and do is fry these about five minutes per side, flipping once. So, what we're going to go ahead and do is let our pan and our oil do its work for us here with the pork chops for a bit. Let me tell you what though, you can see how nice that marinade has already gotten into our pork chops here. And also, as I'm looking at one of them here right here, do me a favor, do not trim the fat off these pork chops until after you're about ready to serve them to your friends, family, and loved ones. The fat adds a lot of flavor to the pork chops themselves and you really don't want to miss out on that, okay? Just keep kind of moving around the pork chops too as you're uh, waiting on your five minutes, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and fry some of these up here and then when we come back, we're gonna go ahead and show you what they look like when they're all done, all right? All right, here we are. There is your final presentation of your marinated molasses pork chops and coming up, we're going to go ahead and show you our bacon stuffed potatoes that are right about ready to come out of the oven. So hang in there. And here are our bacon stuffed potatoes just freshly out of the oven. We've gone ahead and put a little bit of our chopped chives on each of them and boy do they look fantastic. Let me tell you, this house smells wonderful. This is such a yeehaw yum type of a side to have with our marinated molasses pork chops. Now, 
We're going to go ahead and get both of these on a presentation plate and we're going to take a little test and see how these taste. All right, so here we go. All right, well, I'm looking at this great presentation plate of our marinated molasses pork chops and our bacon stuffed potatoes. Did a little bit of a chive mode on the plate here with our chives on the plate. Give it a little bit of a chivey motif, if you will. And uh, I'm just really hungry. I'm really looking to give each of these a try. This house smells fantastic. The flavors between the two are just amazing. Just the aromas alone. I'm telling you what, just in making this, your guests that come in while you're cooking all this up are just going to go nuts. I mean, you want, you want somebody to be biting at the chomp for dinner. You make these combinations of these two recipes and the flavors in the house smell wonderful. All right, well, you know what? I got my trusty knife, I got my trusty fork. We're gonna go ahead and take a little test of each of these. I'm gonna go ahead and try the pork chops first here. Just take a little side off. I don't wanna go too crazy here. Oh, yeah. Those look wonderful. There we go. All right, just like that. Go ahead get my napkin here. I'm doing everything left-handed, so I'm trying to maneuver hands here. If you've ever watched the show, if you've ever seen me do that, I look a little like befuddled with the fork and knife. It's because I'm doing it sort of backwards for the cameras and the angles of the kitchen. Anyway, let's go ahead and try this. Marinated molasses pork chops. Mmm. 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 <laughs> I took a big piece. That, my friends, gets a pork chop. Yeehaw, yum! Oh, man. You know the great thing about pan frying pork chops is you sear all that marinade inside. Okay? What I'd recommend to y'all is to marinate these overnight. If you've got the time, make these the night before. Prepare the marinade, get them in your zip bag, and leave them in overnight. Turn them every so often. I'm telling you though, even at an hour, and we just did it an hour just because we wanted to get the show filmed. Fantastic. You t obviously, the first thing you're going to taste is the molasses. And that's why they're marinated molasses pork chops, right? Make, probably make a good, that's probably a good reason why we call them that. But beyond that, you got salt and pepper, you've got the garlic, you've got the ginger, you've got so many great flavors going on in there. The Worcestershire sauce. I mean, I can taste so many things when I'm when I'm biting into that. And the pork is nice and tender. It's cooked all the way through because we're pan frying and searing it. It's nice and juicy and tender on the inside. I'm telling you, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with that. Mm, wonderful. Now, let's go ahead and try our bacon stuffed potatoes. I love these. I so love these. I'm just going to take a little bite, though. Grab my napkin here. Well, I want to get some bacon too. There we go. That's kind of a big mouthful, but <laughs> people told me I got a big mouth, so let's see. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like butter. That stuff's like butter. Mmm. I'm still getting flavors. That's why I'm holding off on my uh, final uh, approval here. Wow. This gets a bacon stuffed yeehaw yum! Oh man, I'm just, there's just, again, so many flavors that hit you with this. It's so worth the effort to do this. You've got all the greatness of the potato itself. We didn't put any butter in this now. Did you notice that? There was no butter in this recipe. We had the sour cream. And we had some cheese. That cheddar cheese just melted right in there just beautifully. We had uh, bacon, of course. And that in itself really encompasses the whole potato itself. And then you've got salt and pepper that add to it. As I said, no more than a teaspoon of salt because that bacon really goes and once it's cooked in, it opens up all its juices and flavors and it really makes it salty. Not salty bad, but if you put anything more than maybe a teaspoon of salt in there, 
eat, I think it'd be a little too salty for most people. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. The chives add a little bit of a onion zing to it at the top, and this is great. I mean, what a great meal to serve on a Sunday meal, a special meal, heck, any time of meal, really. I mean, it's fantastic. It's a one-two punch. You can go ahead and put some cornbread on the side with that, maybe a salad in the beginning, and you've got yourself a fantastic yee-haw yum type of a meal. Try it. Let us know how you think of it. All right? Well, that's all the time that we have on this episode of the Chuck Wagon Cowboy Show. Now, as I've always been trying to tell you all, thank you so much for watching our show and all the great support you've given us over the season. It really, really makes a difference. It inspires me, it inspires our team to really give you a good quality show and to really give you great ideas each episode for great recipes. So thank you so much again, really, for, for watching us and for uh, checking us out. And all the great email and all the great messages y'all have been sending. I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm tickle pink. I'm tickle pink. Actually, tickle blue tonight. But anyway, so, that's it. This is Chef Ron Locke saying as I always do on the close of every episode of the Chuck White Cowboy Show. Get off that couch and get cooking! We'll see you next time.